Hello everybody, this is Rob Redman. Uh, just recently I started using a Wacom Cintiq Companion, which is the, the hybrid version of the 13-inch uh, Full HD uh, Wacom Cintiq. And um, I started showing off a few sketches, and since I did that, um, I've had a lot of emails asking me about how I work, what the device is like, um, all that kind of stuff, you know, the, what sort of brushes I use, how I go about my work, and um, just a, a few questions about how I'm using it, how I find it. So I thought I'd just put together a very quick video. Um, and you can see here I'm in Photoshop. Now this is hooked up uh, to my Mac um, and I'm just using the, the mirror display options. Um, you can go up to the mirroring options here and you can swap around which is the, the mirrored uh, monitor and also just turn off mirroring in totally so that you can have um, the Cintiq as kind of an extension of your desktop. Now I prefer using it mirrored like this and I'm mirroring the Cintiq so this is a full HD workspace I'm working on here um, and I can look up and see it on my iMac as well if I want to um, but I'm using this with the, the base um, the, the Cintiq comes with a base which has kind of three different angles of, of position and I'm on the central position which I'm guessing is about probably about 35 degrees, something like that, um, by the looks of it. Um, so, I think my first impressions have been very good. Um, I've really enjoyed using it. It took a little bit of getting used to. Um, I usually use a Wacom uh, Intuos 5, um, so I'm used to using a stylus. In fact, I, I don't even own a mouse um, for my Macs. Um, I always use a, a tablet now, have done for probably getting on for a year. Um, other input devices I have are a 3D connection space mouse, um, which I will find quite handy when I'm in a, a kind of a heavy duty modeling mode in 3D. And I also have a, an Apple Magic Trackpad um, and keyboard just for general use. Um, although to be fair, I very usually, very rarely use the trackpad. I'm almost entirely uh, found with a stylus in my hand. So the device is a, an Android device as well as just a kind of the same as the, the 13 HD uh, Cintiq. Um, and as an Android device, it's pretty good. Um, it's a bit on the heavy side because it's quite a large screen. No, you don't really see many 13 inch tablets around. Um, but you know, that's fine. Uh, it's good for sitting and drawing on your lap. I've found that I use Sketchbook Pro quite a lot in Android mode, which is really good. Really works very well. Um, and it works in layered formats and you can export PSDs. Um, I'm doing it just using Dropbox, but it comes with good file management software as well. Now Wacom do supply a couple of art apps as well. I haven't got on them quite as well. I prefer using Photoshop for Android and Sketchbook as I said. Anyway, in this video, I'm just going to look at what I've got the, the device set up as. Um, so I have four express keys on the left side of the device and they are set up starting from the top and you'll see over here somewhere you should see the little uh, menu item pop up so I have my settings on the top button and you can see I've got middle click and right click set up on my stylus um, just get rid of that my next button down is for my shift key um, which is quite handy if you want to draw a straight line or something then you know that's uh, all very good um, shift is uh, something I use a lot in lots of applications so it's worth having that and option or alt um, which I also have um, I use this for ZBrush as well quite a bit uh, which is becoming a really kind of intuitive way of working so having option and shift there uh, very useful for, for that and Photoshop and then my bottom express key is the spacebar um, and the image you're looking at here this white background um, is 1280 by 720 and you're looking at the actual pixels and um, so I wouldn't probably use the spacebar much but when I'm working on a bigger file and I'm, or I want to zoom in so if I'm zoomed right in then I let's just get something on the screen there so I can press that button without having to hunt around for my keyboard and I can pan around um, and for other apps spacebar is uh, you know always used it's very common control so let's just zoom back out again uh, just go to my full pixels okay so 
when it comes to my sketching, the, the biggest question, question I've had um, since I started posting my drawings was about the brushes I use um, and my methods of working. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a new layer, a very whirly work on the background layer. Um, and here I'm just going to increase my brush size. And I'm just going to lay down, you can see the colors I've got here. This is, these are the kind of two basic flesh tones um, for kind of stylized characters. And I'm just going to, let's just increase the flow. Now, I'll talk about flow and opacity in a minute, but let's just get this down. You can see here, you can, even though I've got everything set to 100, you can see that actually you're not getting 100% um, because this is set. If I go into my brushes, uh, you know, I've got some of my brush palette here, uh, that one here, you can see that I have the transfer and smoothing options um, turned on and that means that the stylus is controlling the amount of opacity. I'm just going to swap to my other colour and I'm just going to lay on a few strokes and I'm just using the pressure of the stylus to get the kind of intermediates. Now I'm also going to add probably a lighter tone there with just a touch of touch more red in it and this will be kind of a, a very light highlight. Now I've got that there and this will be the basis for any skin painting I might do and I just use that as a kind of a palette to pick from so I can use uh, I can use my alt key as you saw which is you know you can see the option there on my express keys just to color pick between the whole range of what I might want to paint. Now this is quite a basic set of colors and there's no cool shades in there there's no yellows really uh, which you might want to add to skin but I would do them on top separately. Now for my painting brushes, I, as I said, I like to have the spacing turned down to zero, um, but more importantly, I like to have my opacity down to somewhere between 30 and 40 probably, depending on what I'm doing, and flow right down to, again, about 30%. Uh, and that means that I can just kind of work very easily. Let's just undo this, I'll show you. In fact, let's show you on a grayscale image. Um, I'm going to go to black, and I'm just going to decrease my brush size. Let's just make a new layer. And this can be, let's just, uh, let's just draw a quick line across there and it's some kind of a rock. Now, I'm going to increase again and just using my black and using a little bit of overlay here just to create a bit of depth here um, what you can see straight away I don't like the size of this brush is how this builds up now this is a really grotty looking drawing obviously uh, this is not pretty by any means but it shows you how I work and I tend to start off very very loosely indeed um, just add a bit more shadow over here. Now I'm using brushes uh, the way I would usually use a brush, um, but it's um, it's not pre precise example. Now I can use Alt just to pick a white and decrease my brush size and just add in a bit of a highlight here. Now there's no real texture involved. I'm just placing down values. Uh, one thing I like to avoid if possible as well and it's something that I see a lot uh, that people stumble into kind of having uh, let's just make a new layer let's decrease this size again I'm just going to very quickly just draw in imagine I'd done a concept sketch before I started painting um, and this is my concept sketch so I'd keep that on a separate layer because that's a good guide for all my shapes and forms um, but actually, generally speaking, you wouldn't want to have a black line around everything unless you're doing kind of comic work, possibly. Um, so I'm going to take a mid-grey. I'm going to get a really big brush and just lay in a slight background. Very, very quick strokes. Oh, I shouldn't have done that there. I should have done that on my paint layer, possibly even on my background layer, like so. Now, okay, so let's just add in bit of shade behind just to give a bit of 
clarity for what I want to show you. So we'll just add a bit more in here. Now you can see I've got this, I'm using a hard brush, I don't like to use a soft brush. If I take my brush hardness right down, you'll get what at first might appear to be a more pleasing result because it fades out nicely. Um, but actually it can make your paintings look a bit mushy, so I tend to avoid using them uh, if at all possible. There are, if you're going for a real airbrushed look for skin tones then you might use it, but I prefer the more painterly effect of having a hard edge brush. Anyway, so let's go back to what I was saying. Uh, I don't like to work with the lines, line art showing in the final version, so I'll go into my paint layer and I'll just pick my highlight colour. Uh, might just zoom in a touch here, and this is where the other express key comes in. And I'm just going to reduce reduce my brush size there, and just go around where I might have missed, just because my sketch was on top. And just go pick in some details here. Okay, so okay, I'm going to just extend this over the top, I just want to chip some of these corners as well because it's a bit of a potato looking rock and reasonably happy with how this is looking now one other thing to think about is and this is more of a 3D thing actually uh, I'm going to make a new layer I'm just going to increase my brush size and just bring the floor because it's not really a proper floor so don't worry too much but it's just okay now, if you're working on something that has some ambient light, you might not have this full shadow here. In most cases, you'll find you'll have a bit of bounce light. So this is why I talk about 3D. So if you turn on GI and you do a render of a shiny ball, um, something that I'm sure you all know I'm a fan of, uh, you'll have a, a little bit of a bounce light. And it might be a different color. Um, it, in grayscale, obviously, you're just going to have um, a slight bounce back and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a slight bounce back there like so now if this gets too strong I can always dial it back in um, I might just increase that there give myself a bigger brush and then I might just dial back that layer so, like so, you can already see our potato is looking a little bit more realistic. Now, I was talking about the colours I used earlier on. Let's have a look at maybe just... I'm just going to delete that sketch, I don't need it anymore. Uh, let's use this layer, which was our sketch layer, which is now an empty layer. Let's see if I can give you a bit more. I'll zoom in here a little, just so you can see a bit more what I'm talking about. I might want to make this for this example, a flesh coloured layer, uh, or potato. Um, so I'm just going to pick my base colour. So using my option express key. On this new layer, I'm going to just paint over it. Now you can see I'm losing some of the definition already, and this is just one quick layer. Now I'm not worried too much about going over the lines as it were, um, but I've gone into all that effort of just kind of smoothing out some of the highlights and you know adding some bounce light and if I want to then make this a colour you can see this is getting a bit nasty it's all getting a bit kind of looks like well it just looks a mess um, but there's a better way of colorizing so let's just skip back and I'll do this with a um, I'll do it with a solid brush actually right, let's go Let's just turn the I'll turn the maximum opacity up just a bit. I'm going to change this layer to a color layer. Uh, there's my color layer, and I'm just going to paint this over the top. And hopefully, you can already see that this is keeping the value underneath. And you can still see all the shading, it's not washing it out, it's not making it look muddy or wishy-washy um, and this is all looking mu much nicer than it was before. Now 
interestingly if I go in here pick my highlight color in fact let's just pick a mid color first and I can start painting just a bit of that color I can add in a little of the warmth to my highlights without having to actually paint the highlights uh, which is quite useful so I can add in all that warmth there let's go in and pick my final highlight color just reduce this down and you can see I'm doing this all with my, my opacity set quite high still like so um, and actually that looks alright I could go in and let's say this was an outdoor scene um, I'm not going to paint in a blue sky or like grassy background or anything here um, but what I can do is I can go in choose a cool blue grey something like this uh, maybe a bit stronger just for a bounce light and all I can do is just use this to colorize my bounce just so you can see a bit of blue coming in for my shadow areas and you can see it's keeping the darkness is the same probably a bit round here as well like so I'm just going to go to my eraser tool clean up the floor and essentially that's how I work um, I know it's just a, a quick video to to get you kind of understanding how I sketch this needs a lot of cleanup and there's no texture or anything and um, texture wise uh, I would go in generally with a separate layer let's dump this you can see there that's the color that I added to my, my shaded ball or potato whatever this might be uh, and obviously this is a very extreme example the cools are way too blue um, and too strong there that shouldn't really be that strong uh, but it gives you an idea so texture brushes you could use whatever really um, I, I like to use these kind of splatters so I'm just going to go in and I'll take a grey like so and just add a bit of colour in the background oh I'm still on an eraser how daft apologies uh, let's choose the font okay so I need to just pick a grey again maybe a darker grey and I'm just going to splatter some of this around the back again this isn't a very good example um, maybe some smaller finer details and a bit darker like so and then you get a nice contrast between the highlight here and the bit in the background I'm going to go back to my colour layer and I am actually going to see I've started this now and I've ended up wanting to refine this a little bit just because I'm stuck here doing it so I'm back in my colour layer where I colourise the potato and I'm just going to add a bit of colour to that texture and you can see I don't have to worry about the white parts of the background and in fact it colourises perfectly for me that's not what I want to do. I don't want to paint over my potato. I just want to colourise this background. I'll bring a bit round here as well just to match up that side. Um, I really don't need to be carrying on with this at all. You get the general idea I'm sure um, of how I'm now working with my sketches. Um, and this is what I will do for concept sketches for anything that I'm going to move on into 3D or full paintings. Um, of which I've got a couple on the, on the works at the moment um, which I'll share once I get a bit further anyway my thoughts on the Cintiq uh, it makes artwork like this not that this is particularly artistic um, it makes it much more intuitive uh, it makes it much more fun and the feedback so instant it's, um, it's brilliant the device is great uh, the express keys work perfectly um, I also have the kind of the, the central menu here so I can work on the these different options without having to bury myself into menus so I could if I wanted just you know hit F work in full mode here and then I've still got those controls um, I have some other options display toggles I'm not going to do that um, let's turn that off um, so that's the display toggle um, by hitting up on the four-way control in the, uh, in the Wacom itself um, is how I would change which screen is being mirrored or which is an extension and you can actually have it so that the 
the the Cintiq is an extension of your main monitor um, and you can switch between which one the stylus is controlling which is another quite handy way of working um, so you could effectively um, use your Cintiq as a normal Intuos controlling your main monitor um, which when I'm working in a, a big 3D app uh, like Maya or Cinema 4D is the way I would work um, because I'm used to using an Intuos for that kind of work all the time and I need the the screen estate um, of the the big 27 inch monitor um, and then the down key is the brush touch strips um, and I have Photoshop colorist as well which I'm not really using um, because my workflow doesn't really need it um, so that's my little overview of how I work and how I'm finding the Cintiq um, I'm going to try and find a way of recording some Sketchbook Pro uh, in the Android mode I might just have to get a camera over my shoulder um, but I hope that's been of some use um, thanks again for asking me um, about how I work